Welcome to my first vegetable garden. Today I want to talk about what a soluble fertilizer is, what an insoluble fertilizer is. And it's really important you learn the difference because they're used differently in your garden. I have a mix of fertilizers here. We're not going to talk today about organic gardening or chemical fertilizers. I just want to go over the two terms, insoluble and soluble, so you know how to use them in your garden. And it does make a difference. The premise is, generally, plants can only absorb materials when they are dissolved in water. So, keep it simple, the roots absorb water, if mixed in that water are your nutrients, they go into the plant. Simple but true. Insoluble fertilizer are fertilizers that can immediately be used by plants. They don't readily mix with water until that fertilizer, that insoluble fertilizer, is slowly digested or broken down by soil life. So the microbes have to go to that fertilizer, start breaking it down. While it breaks it down, it changes it into a form that mixes with water and therefore the root system can pull it in. So you have your insoluble fertilizers. Most, but not all organic fertilizers are insoluble and that's just a guideline. What I want you to be able to do is when you read the product, you're going to be looking for the terms insoluble and soluble so you know what you're getting. And again, insoluble fertilizer is a slow release and it needs soil life or the microbes to break it down or get it started. The next kind of fertilizer, well before I get to soluble, let me show you some examples of the insoluble. A lot of times when they talk about insoluble, we're really talking about nitrogen, but it, it really is all the fertilizers. So right here we have total nitrogen, 6%. Of that 6%, it's water insoluble. And that's what you're looking for. Nitrogen is what, you know, makes your plant green, gets the leaves growing, gets the plant growing. So when you're using insoluble fertilizer, it's going to take time before that's ready for your plant. And we'll talk about how you use it in a garden in a minute. But again, 6% water insoluble nitrogen. So you want to read the back of the package. And, and if you want to look at my other videos, I explain what the um, N, P, and K are, which are you know, right here, 1200, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I have other videos that explain the fertilizers to you more in depth. But here again, 12% water insoluble nitrogen. So you might buy this and say, well, 12% nitrogen, that'll really get the leaves growing. And it will, but not right away. It has to be broken down by soil life. Here's another example. This one's a little bit harder to see. It has, let's see. It's 4% nitrogen. 1.6% is water soluble. 2.4% is water insoluble. Insoluble, right. So you really have both in here. You have a form of nitrogen that will mix with water right away and get to the plant. And then you have that other version, which is insoluble, which will take time for the soil life to break it down. Neither one of these or any of these products are better than the other. They all work. You just have to know what you're buying. So the next thing you come to is soluble, and that can be immediately used by plants, does not need to be broken down by soil life. So I use the soluble fertilizers more in my containers because my containers don't really have soil life in there to break down the insoluble products. Other videos I'll go more in depth about how you prepare container soil, what you might use. So they do have different uses. Also, soluble fertilizer is great for the mid-season when your plants have been growing. They may have taken a lot out of the, the um, earth bed you're growing them in, and they need a boost. And rather than put down an insoluble fertilizer that will take time, you feed them with the soluble fertilizer from your watering can. Most, not all, chemical or processed fertilizers are water soluble. They're fast release and you have to use them wisely. I'll be talking a lot this year, even though this says typically one, tables, um, yeah, one tablespoon per gallon, you don't need all that. You can use half of a tablespoon. That's a whole subject of another video. But more is not really more, less is sometimes a lot better. But again, most, not all the chemical fertilizers or processed fertilizers are water soluble, fast release, and you should use them wisely. Don't overdo it. If you keep using these water soluble products, the fast release ones, sometimes you get great looking green plants that grow lots of leaves, look really healthy, get bushy, but they don't produce as much 
as many tomatoes as you want, as many peppers as you want, because you're really overdoing it with the nitrogen. When you look at this product, let's see if I can find it, right in here, and it says all-purpose water-soluble plant food, 15-30-15, that's really too high. If you cut that in half, you get a 7-15-7 seven, seven fertilizer, which is sort of high too. You can even bring that down more. But this is all soluble in water. One tablespoon into a gallon usually. You can pour this onto your plant. It's a foliar feed. One tip to pay attention to is if you're buying the water-soluble plant foods, most of them are foliar feeds. You just have to read it. It is possible you go and you buy a nitrogen product that is water-soluble, you mix it, you pour it on your plant, and you burn the leaves. Because that type of product is not meant to be poured onto the leaves of the plant. It's meant, meant to be used in the ground or in drip irrigation systems. But if you're really going and buying these boxes, you're going to be fine. But that's the difference. Foliar feed means you can pour it right onto the leaves. It won't damage it. So when you look at this, you have... 0.5% water soluble nitrogen and 2.5% water insoluble nitrogen. So just because this is mixed in water doesn't mean all the nitrogen is readily available. This has both. Something that the plant can take that day, you know, in a couple of days and pull it into the system and then other stuff that will be broken down by the organisms, you know, in your soil. So most important, just to recap, there are two kinds of fertilizer. You have insoluble and you have soluble. And how would you use them? Let's just go real quickly. Earth beds. It's spring. You get some insoluble fertilizers, whatever brand you want to buy. You mix it in the ground. That will slowly break down over the growing season and supply your plant with food. Maybe mid-season come, lots of growth. The plants look a little bit yellow, worn out. You go to the soluble fertilizer, which will bring nitrogen right away to your plants, help green them up. Now, maybe you're using containers. In your container soil, sometimes I make them uh, my soil really out of um, dirt from a bag and peat moss. So what's missing? What's missing in that container is a really good um, mix of soil life. There's not a lot of microbes in there. It's not like the soil that's in your garden. If you're not mixing compost really into your containers, you're going to have great growing medium. I mean, I grow great plants in there. It just doesn't have a lot of soil life. So if I use a lot of insoluble products in there, it's not going to release as quickly as I want. It will eventually because the microbes tend to find their way into your soil. So I have to be thinking, is my plant going to grow slow enough that insoluble fertilizer works or do I want to really take care of it with a soluble fertilizer like this. And I tend to use in my container plants more chemically processed by people type fertilizer. And in my garden, I use more organic products. Um, also in my garden, if you want to save a lot of money, forget the organic products, go with compost. But that's the subject of another video. But again, it's really important. I know if you're just starting gardening, you can be overwhelmed with all these different bags of things that you need or don't need. And a lot of times we don't need them. We're just sold that we need to buy all this kind of stuff. You need any type, one box, whatever you prefer, of a soluble fertilizer. And then you need some sort of insoluble fertilizer. It's your choice. I'll do more videos on organic chemical fertilizers and all that later. But I want you to understand those two points. Hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you an explanation of insoluble and soluble and you know how to better prepare for your garden. Please check out my blog at www.therestofgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.